friends need to tell each other the hard truths. Secretary of State John Kerry delivering a blunt message to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The Israeli Prime Minister publicly supports a two-state solution. But his current coalition is the most right-wing in Israeli history with an agenda driven by the most extreme elements. Pushing back following Washington's decision not to veto the United Nations vote condemning Israeli settlements in Jerusalem and the West Bank. On this point, I want to be very clear. No American administration has done more for Israel's security than Barack Obama's. Kerry vehemently defended the U.S. abstention, saying the very prospects of Middle East peace are at stake. The vote in the United Nations was about preserving the two-state solution. That's what we were standing up for. The two-state solution is now in serious jeopardy. Kerry acknowledged the U.S. consulted on the resolution, but denies Israel's claim that the U.S. was the driving force behind it. The United States did not draft or originate this resolution, nor did we put it forward. Israel's Netanyahu called Kerry's speech disappointing and more. Israelis do not need to be lectured about the importance of peace by foreign leaders. Prime Minister Netanyahu promised Israel has the evidence to prove that the U.S. orchestrated the vote and would show that evidence to President-elect Trump when he takes office in just a few weeks. We have it on absolutely incontestable evidence that the United States organized, advanced, and brought this resolution to the United Nations Security Council. We'll share that information with the incoming administration. For his part, President-elect Trump did not stand on the sidelines, tweeting before Kerry's speech, we cannot continue to let Israel be treated with such total disdain and disrespect. They used to have a great friend in the U.S., but not anymore. Stay strong, Israel. January 20th is fast approaching. Prime Minister Netanyahu quickly Hello, tweeted back, President-elect Trump, thank you for your warm friendship and your clear-cut support for Israel. Despite the public tensions, President Obama recently decided to increase U.S. aid to Israel, committing $38 billion over 10 years, part of the largest pledge of military assistance in U.S. history, which Kerry noted was not a new stance. In the midst of our own financial crisis and budget deficits, we repeatedly increased funding to support Israel. In fact, more than one half of our entire global foreign military financing goes to Israel. Israelis do not need to be lectured about the importance of peace by foreign leaders. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry wasted no time getting to the heart of the matter during a speech Wednesday, warning Israel that a two-state solution with the Palestinians, quote, is in serious jeopardy. Kerry spoke for more than an hour, defending the United States' decision last week to abstain from a vote on the U.N. resolution condemning Israeli settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, essentially allowing the measure to pass. We fully respect Israel's profound historic and religious ties to the city and to its holy sites. We've never questioned that. This resolution in no manner prejudges the outcome of permanent status negotiations on East Jerusalem, which must, of course, reflect those historic ties and the realities on the ground. But Israel isn't buying it. Secretary Kerry said that the United States cannot vote against its own policy. But that's exactly what it did at the UN. And neither is President-elect Donald Trump, writing, quote, We cannot continue to let Israel be treated with such total disdain and disrespect. They used to have a great friend in the U.S., but not anymore. The beginning of the end was the horrible Iran deal, and now this, U.N. Stay strong, Israel. January 20th is fast approaching. Trump's remarks prompted a quick reply from Netanyahu. But France, which is set to host an international peace conference on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict next week, praised Kerry's words as courageous. I'm Reed Binion reporting.
탄생을 경축하는 의의 깊은 혁명적 명절입니다. 오늘의 성대한 열병식과 군중시위는 우리 당이 장장 70년간 군대와 인민을 영도하여 목적까지 다져온 무진막강한 위력을 남김없이 보여줄 것이며 조선여동당의 뒤에 깨무쳐 광명한 미래로 용기 백배 신심 드럽히 나아가는 천만 국민의 혁명적 기상을 만천하에 과시하게 될 것입니다. 승리와 영광으로 빛나는 조선노동당의 성스러운 역사를 흔들없이 돌이켜보는 이 뜻깊은 자리에서 우리 당의 수백만 당원들과 전체 인민군 장병들 인민들의 다음 없는 경모와 충정의 마음을 담아 영광스러운 우리 당의 장원자이신 위대한 수령님과 전업 높은 우리 당 조선노동당의 영원한 정비서이신 위대한 장군님께 가장 숭고한 경의와 영원 무궁한 영광을 드립니다. حالا که روابط موسکو و آنکارا دلبران است سخنان آقای اردوغان هم در موسکو دلنشین است واشنگتن ادعای اردوغان در مورد حمایت این کشور از داعش و یپگه را رد می کند اما الکسی یوشکوف نماینده سنای روسیه به حمایت از آقای اردوغان می گوید اردوغان درست می گوید و حق دارد این ادعاها را مطرح کند روزنامه ینی شفق سخنان صبحی توفیلی دبیر کل سابق حزب الله لبنان را منعکس کرده و از قول او می نویسد ایران شیعیان لبنان را فریب داده. روزنامه جمهوریت با دغدغه همکاران بازداشت شده خود می نویسد وکلای این روزنامه شکایتی را به دادگاه قانون اساسی ارائه کردند و در آن زندانی شدن ده روزنامه نگار و مسئول این روزنامه توسط پلیس ترکیه را غیرقانونی و خلاف حق آزادی مطبوعات دانستند. آیسل تغلوک معاون حزب کردی دموکراتیک خلقها چهارشنبه شب به اتهام همکاری و همدستی با پکاکا بازداشت و روانه زندان شد تا تعداد نمایندگان و اعضای بازداشت شده این حزب منتقد دولت به عدد ده برسد به نظر می رسد در آستانه تغییر قانون اساسی در ترکیه این حزب با فشارهای بیشتری هم روبرو خواهد شد زخم های داعش بر پیکر بشر امروز گاه در میان خبرها گم و یا بر حسب برخی محدودیت ها به هاشیه می رود. 
مثل این خبر که حسن توران نماینده ترکمن تبار پارلمان عراق اعلام می کند و می گوید آمار دقیقی از زنهای ترکمن که در تل افر توسط داعش رو بوده شدند در دست نیست او علت این امر را اخلاق اشیرهی ترکمن ها می داند که از انتشار و برجست نمایی این حوادث خودداری می کنند نوعی شرم قبیله ای به نظر می رسد این تنها زنان بیگناه هستند که از یک سو قربانی جنایات داعش هستند و از دیگر سوی به دلیل شرم اشیره ای نباید امیدی به پیگیری وضعیت خود داشته باشند نومان کورتولموش معاون نخست وزیر ترکیه ویدئوی منتشر شده توسط داعش که در آن دو سرباز ترک به آتش کشیده می شوند را ساختگی دانست و به رسانه ها هشدار داد که مراقب فعالیت های خود باشند او گفت ما در حال نبرد با داعش هستیم و نباید با انتشار خبرهای نادرست موجب تضعیف روحیه مردم بشویم و ما ترک ها هم در آستانه سال نو در فکر آزمودن بخت مالی خود از طریق بلیت های بخت آزمایی هستند حالا که کمی وضع اقتصادی ناپایدار است شاید بخت برنده روی یکی از همین بلیت ها رخ نماید روزنامه خبر ترک در گزارشی به تب و تاب خرید بلیت بخت آزمایی در آغاز سال نو پرداخته و نوشته کل جایزه ای که سازمان بخت آزمایی در نظر گرفته بالغ بر 340 میلیون لیره ترک است و از این بابت ترکیه در رده سوم فروش بزرگترین بلیت بخت آزمایی سال نو قرار گرفته.